G'day guys, it's going to be a big day today, we're going to get a whole bunch of joinery done, we're going to get some patterns made, we're going to get some things, some of the sub-assemblies assembled, so stick around and let's get it done. And what I'm doing here is very important, I'm about to run a whole bunch of grooves for those splines like I was doing last night, I just need to make sure I clearly mark where I want to put them. And that was the wrong side. <laughs> Gee, good start, Cuffy. So when thickness in very thin material like this, it's very important that when you feed it in, you want to bend it as much as you can without breaking it. Now I've got it stuck. And the same thing for tailing out. So I currently have a spline installed into this slot, this slot and this slot, but I need to find which whereabouts this slot is supposed to go under here so that because if I move that that way, for example, it's going to kick that off square. So I want to keep everything square. I want this surface to be parallel to that surface. But the critical point is, is that this face here where the drawer will run along and this face here where the side slats sit on top, I want that to be dead square. Everything else, this, this is inconsequential, but this is, that's critical. So now I get my handy dandy marking knife, make a couple of tick marks right there. So by rights, everything should work out just nicely now, but I'm always gonna check it because it's only gonna take me a couple of minutes to check it or three and a half hours to fix it. Get my handy dandy square out. I like it. I'm going to put a round over on this well, on the inside edges of the thing that I'm making over there. So I'm going to use the router table. I could just put this cutter into a trimmer or into a trim router and goes bzzz, but that's not as good and I'll show you why. So I've got my router bit there with a bearing and I want to have this front edge of my fence in line with that bearing. That's easy enough, that's obvious. But where do I, where do I put the router bit in relation to the fence? If I put it on this side here, Assume that this piece of paper is the bit of timber. It comes through there, hits the cutter, and then, you know, if I can spin it, it pulls it back. Now, if this timber was to splinter and break, as it often does, it's going to break all the way back to this point here. That's terrible. That can actually destroy your project because it can, it can actually run inside your, um, inside your finished piece area. So what you want to do is you want to bring this right up to the right up to the tip to use this part of the fence as a chip breaker. No different to a jointer table, the infeed table of the jointer or the chip breakers inside a thicknesser. So now when it comes through there and if it was a splinter, well it can only splinter out um, a quarter of an inch. It's a much better way of doing it. So the next tip is to plane with the grain. 
But what does that mean? I'm going to be putting in a 10 mil roundover and a 3 8 inch roundover on these boards. And so it's going to go onto this corner here. Now, if I look at my board, I can see that the grain is running very slightly in a direction that way. So, if I was to make those same marks, it's flip it over, it's going that way. If I was to put that on there and push it through, I'm actually now planing against the grain. So, but what can I do? I need to put a round over on that corner. I can't do it on any other corner. That's the corner that it needs to go onto. What I actually want to do is I want to run it the other way, but I can't do that. But because it's a round over bit, all I can do is I can turn it around, but now I need to cut that side right. Then what do I do? Put it, put it vertical. Now I'm cutting with the grain, cutting down the grain as, as we say, and I'll get, I'll, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to get any tear out, but I'll get far less tear out if it was to happen. So you've always got that option with roundover bits that you don't have to run, you don't have to run flat all the time. If, if that's the wrong direction, you can just flip it around and run vertical. So because this is just a residential house and I've got neighbours directly next door, I try to keep all my noisy operations done during the day between let's say 11 o'clock in the morning and let's say 5 o'clock in the evening. I don't want to go before that or after that because well, once you get good neighbours you want to look after them as best you can. So I just had a look at these rails here and these are the rails that I machined two or three days ago, I think two days ago. And they've moved quite a lot and I actually need these to be fairly straight before I glue them up. So these are at the final size at the moment, but the final size just became a little bit smaller because things happen.
neighbours are sleeping next door. It's half past one in the morning. We'll call, we'll get this thing glued up and then we'll go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. Be sure to like, subscribe and share these videos because I'm going to be around for weeks.